So, what is this? See, now it's running at 30 frames per second. Now it's running at 60 frames per second. You can see the numbers now here. Now the number of times per frame is increasing. Now it's doing the process which I'm gonna attempt to explain a thousand times per frame. But you haven't said what this is. I'm, I'm going to say what this is in a second, but you can see what number this is converging on. You can see it's E. So it's something that generates Euler's number. Yes. And how does it do that? So, um, this was actually based on a uh, puzzle. Uh, there's a bit of story that I that I might want to um, um, exp that I'm now going to attempt to explain, and then afterwards I'm going to show you sort of the mathematic uh, the, the 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 well. Actually, I'm going to attempt to show the story and the mathematics at the same time. So it all starts with a um, thing that, that I'm going to attempt to open. Thing. Oh, this is what I'm looking for. Ah. So this is not actually the puzzle that this is solving. So this is a little uh, puzzle that I made with a square, and I put a random point inside the square. Uh, from This is from William, by the way. And then I put a little, um, and, and then this uh, angle here. And what's the probability that it's obtuse? And that's what we're trying to figure out. And it turned out that the answer is, well, you can see uh, six people tried uh, to solve this puzzle. And it and uh, a number of people got it right. Uh, it's pretty much half, half, half and half, that, uh, the number of people uh, who have got it right, I think. So, um, and the correct answer is pi divided by 8. So the correct answer is pi divided by eight, and you can see over here some um, some of the proof behind this. And then this is that's the proof. So I, and then uh, there are, and then the thread continued. There's a. Brilliant uh, has uh, who uh, right now actually follows me, which is quite exciting. On Twitter. Uh, uh, so, and I also follow, uh, follow each other. Uh, it gave me another uh, puzzle, which I think was simpler. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, two people randomly pick a real number from zero to one. What's the probability that the sum of their squares is less than one? And um, I just straight away got circle. So, uh, right, because a sum of squares leads you to think like a squared plus b squared equals c squared Pythagorean theorem, and you know, so, so, <laughs> uh, that's the healthy way to think of sum of squares. So, um, um, in a, in a way of saying that completely stolen from 3 blue one brown who <laughs> also comes into the story, uh, so over here, uh, I just have the corresponding circle, and the ratio is pi over 4. So that's the answer, pi over, pi over 4. And then, uh, that's the, this is quite simple. And then the thread continued on. Uh, and then I thought this was hard. And then, because of the 3, and this is where 3 blue and 1 brown enters the story, 3 blue and 1 brown actually posted some sort of video somewhere um, um, uh, about darts, which is actually a more complicated well, version. somewhere, a number file, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, but, um, over here, um, it, it's, it's basically a harder version of this puzzle. But anyway, what's the answer to this puzzle?
puzzle. So, uh, so that's how you came up with your proof for this puzzle. And I, and think, that, you, I think you presented it at Math Jam Antwerp with a lot of success. Yes, and... Oh, and that's what your program is now based on. Yes! That's how you're generating E. Because that's the answer, E. Ah. So uh, I'll show you. So what's, so what's the game here? Because oh. that was your own original proof, right? Yes. Uh, it, it was based on three blue, one browns proof from for the darts puzzle, but I, but this is my own proof. And I said, you know, this 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 all occurred in the summer, and then and then I was and and then and then I'm like suddenly back with a solution. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> but nobody seems to have reacted. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I attempt to explain the puzzle because uh, <laughs> this very messy little. Um, uh, introduction to the story. I didn't actually explain the, that that um, the the puzzle that I was that that I uh, have solved. So you pick. Here's how it goes. You have let's say uh, zero and one. You pick um, a random number between zero and one. So let's say <laughs> over here. I don't know, it's around 0.3, I think. And so I'm going to pick 0.3. Now, the sum of this number is, is, is not greater than 1, it's 0.3. <laughs> now I'm going to pick another random number. I think it's around 0.5. So I'm going to... And I'm going to add these together, point, 0.3 and 0.5. It's... Point eight, so uh, it's so okay. It's point eight, so it's so it's not yet bigger than one. So I'm gonna keep going until the sum I get is bigger than one. I think I just got point seven five or something, but anyway, it's bigger than one. So it's so it's exceeded one, which is. Um, what I'm trying to do, and when it exceeds one, the question is, what is the expected number of numbers you'll pick? So, um... On average. On average. Uh, and the answer turns out to be E. I'm going to, um, show you, um, uh, this proof that I have nicely laid out on two pages. And also, I also have, uh, this, um, more sort of messy thing of me, this is actually the original paper of me actually um, uh, uh, figuring out the solution. Uh, it, it is a little bit tough, it involves some sort of like matrix math, <laughs> which actually you, makes it even more tough, so that's not... Uh, that's, but do you want to maybe explain it? Uh, a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I, I, I don't really want to explain it. I just This is meant to just be a short little video about this... this uh, uh, per, which brings me back to uh, this thing that I don't hear. Ooh, it's already done it like 13 million <laughs> iterations. And you can see we're honing in on 2.718. So uh, what this... But basically, you based your code on your proof that Not the average... Not on just on the puzzle. So, uh, on the puzzle that the average number of random numbers you pick between yes. 0 and 1 until the sum reaches exceeds 1 is going to be E. Yeah, the answer to, to the puzzle is that it's E. <laughs> so uh, the and average number um, of numbers you'll pick is E. And how did you incorporate that in the, in the code? Um, the way I did this is, uh, you can see over here, uh, the black number is just a random number between 0 and 1. The, 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 that's the random number I'm picking. And then the red number is the accumulated, you can see, the sum. So it's the, the sum of the random numbers. It, it's, it's sort of sorting over, so yeah. And then when that exceeds one, and, and then it's, it's, uh, it just resets back. Uh, and it's counting the number of times that you, um, that, that, that uh, you pick a random number. So that's... And that's marked in blue right here. Um, oh, so in a way, 
With this program, you've actually proven once again that the answer is E, experimentally. <laughs> yes. Uh, now over here, uh, this yellow number is just the number of times I've played this game. So, uh, the, <laughs> so, um, it's huge. It's already like 16 million. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you see how quick this process is, and. And the green number is just the answer. It's the average uh, of all of these um, of all these little counts that I've done. This is beautiful. I'm worried it's gonna overflow, so I'm gonna um, stop it just right now. But I, but you can, because you can see, it's already honed in on t point seven one eight. Um, so another thing that I'm planning to do is. Uh, um, a different way to approximate E, which brings us to uh, three blue, one brown. Um, I'm also planning to do a little um, the, the, a, a geometric way using the dart throwing method. So uh, what I want to do is um, this other puzzle looks like this. Let's say you have a square dartboard, uh, an inscribed circle. So you throw a random uh, dart uh, in this in the in the square, just randomly, and then you do. Uh, so you, by the way, you get one point for for playing this, and then for so you can think of this as a dartboard and this is a bullseye. So you can have uh, so so you throw the dart, and if you hit the bullseye, you get a point. So I right now have two points. Then. Then what you do is you, you do the following construction to shrink the bullseye. So this is what you want to do. You take the center and you draw this little line here, this line segment, and you do a chord that's perpendicular, like this. And then the length of that chord is going to determine the new diameter of the circle. And then you throw another one. Okay, I missed. But um, you can see, if I hit, I would get another point and do the, repeat the same construction and so on. Until you miss, and then the game is over and, and you just get the number of points you have. And again, what's your expected score? What's the average score that a uniform thrower would do? So, so just randomly within the square. Um, Again, E shows up in a less clean way, though. It, it's the answer is E to the power of tie fourths. Um, if, if I were lazy, I would just uh, <laughs> take the pi fourth root. I want to be a little bit more ambitious and actually also calculate pi fourths <laughs> using a separate method. Um, uh, <laughs> And then see if I can take the that pi fourth root of that, and and, and, and that's I've not actually made that yet. Uh, I'm, I'm so I'm planning to make that uh, a, a more geometric way of doing um, of doing this uh, e approximation thing. Uh, this is based on uh, this this uh, is inspired by a very common way to approximate pi. So uh, you know you have a square. And a, a square and an inscribed circle, and then you throw darts within a square, and then the probability that it will land in the circle is pi over four. So you have, so so you could just multiply that by four, and you get pi. I wanted to see if I could come up with the same sort of thing, but for e. <laughs> so um, uh, right now, the only thing that I come up with is this algebraic method, um, and then this geometric method, which actually calculates e to the pi fourths. And yes, the next part of this is calculating the pi fourth root. I find this, if I find this a, a bit too difficult, then I would just take the pi fourth root using code. Um, if it's not too difficult, I, I want to maybe, I'm, I'm going to be even more ambitious than even try to figure out a way to use the infinite series to, to sort of to sort of take a route that way. So so this is 
uh, quite ambitious what I'm planning to do here. <laughs> so this was only a sort of warm up. Okay. So um, what I have here. 